regional housing needs, um, the assessment that's done and the mandate, it, they're unattainable for, mo for most cities. You know, let's take my little city. We are 27,000 people and our, our regional housing need assessment came back to say we almost have to build 2,000 units I'm in a two and a half square mile town. Where are we gonna fit 2,000 units? It's just, it, it's just not realistic. And, um, you know, you're competing against the needs, the infrastructure needs, like there's only so much, you know, the water pipes that run underneath, you know, the streets and sewer lines and like the streets. I mean, almost every city, it has like streets and sidewalks that are broken and haven't been repaired. I mean, those of us that live in, you know, in areas like Los Angeles, geez, like you go anywhere and our, we have broken streets and sidewalks everywhere, trees that haven't been touched in over 30 years. Um, and, you know, there, there's just a, a lack of inability for cities to maintain even like adequate resources for existing housing units by adding more and not adding in money for streets and sidewalks and sewer and water and everything else that we have to take care of as city councils is irresponsible. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. People are living in this reality that doesn't exist except in, in Sacramento, in that Capitol building, because the reality of us that are running cities at the local level is we do not have enough resources, sufficient resources to maintain our current needs for streets and sidewalks and water systems and sewer systems and lighting, elect electric, the electricity, all the basics. So if we truly, if legislators are elected, everybody says we're gonna go out there and we're gonna fight to improve the quality of life of people. Well, they're not doing it if they're voting for these bills. The right thing to do is to, is to push for additional resources to go into funding the, the basic needs of cities. And then also ensuring that housing is affordable, available in the right locations. I think Jeff and Maria, what you were talking about makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of underutilized spaces. The reason they're not pushing to go there is because it's more expensive lot land and they wanna to come to areas, our homes, which they could afford to take from us, purchase or buy from us, than going into areas where, where they could continue to increase you know, density where, where it's appropriate. So there, there are, there's definitely a different approach that, could, that the legislature and the governor could come up with if they actually spent more time talking to people like all of you. The thousand of you that have joined have ideas, you know your neighborhoods, you know the kind of life, quality of life you wanna have, you know the issues, and people, the legislature and the governor need to spend more time talking to people like you so that they understand like the right approach to how we you know, actually build housing, affordability, and all the things we all want. We, we, we as Californians, we as Americans, we wanna take care of each other. We wanna make sure all communities are nice. None of us like to see this overcrowding, highly dense you know, communities that sometimes are located like you know, right adjacent to where we live or a few blocks away or in our neighborhood. And the reality is, is that those are the neighborhoods where we always say, oh, well, these are the disadvantaged communities. These are the communities with high crime. These are the communities you know, where, where all these issues exist. It, we this the government created that the, the the you know they created all of that so they, we should not allow that we should continue to build in a way that promotes first and foremost foremost decency and, re and respect and dignity for everyone and that means that we live in, in in neighborhoods where we have affordable housing high quality housing space ability to have you know a connection to nature open space Yes, the option is going to continue to exist for multifamily, larger apartments. Some people want to live in live in, in you know in an area like that. That's okay, but don't force it on all of us. Don't force it. Don't take away our our R one zoning, single family. Do not take away R two zoning. Respect what has existed in communities literally for hundreds of years, 110 years in San Fernando, and it's worked. Poor people can buy and own a house in our community. Why do they want to destroy that? And just, and, and just, and, and only allow for certain people to come in and, and make money off of it. And, and again, I'll tell you, I'll tell you like in one generation, my parents went from extreme poverty in one generation to all six of us graduating from college, grandchildren going to college. Everybody that has is of age and has graduated from college owns their home. 
They did all of that because they had equity to build, take equity out of their home to pay for college. Back then, UCLA wasn't so expensive. So all they had to do was take out, you know, $10,000 or less, right? They could take out a few thousand dollars and we could pay for college and we went to college and we pay it back. I mean, why are we taking that dream away from people? For what? 